good morning, Jay First Baptist Church, and all those who are who are not in our congregation who watch this video. And I know there are a number of people, uh, some from Orlando area and some in other parts of the of the country. And I appreciate your watching. And I hope that this this regular video that we've been showing does um, does help you and and bring you in a closer walk with God. Uh, Forgive the way my hair looks this morning. Um, it is it is cold here in Jay, and I have very thin hair, and um, it goes crazy when with the static. Uh, had to wet it down a little bit, but um, enough of that. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, it's the 28th of December. We're almost done with this year. We are looking forward to a new year. Uh, we've gone through the Christmas. Uh, holiday activities. Uh, I will be still going out and visiting still. Uh, forgive me, I got out on Christmas Eve and I have some Christmas ornaments still to get out and Christmas Day and the day after and, and then I just was not able to get out for various reasons and then yesterday, uh, Sunday is the day I usually, uh, unless it's an emergency, I usually try to just stay around and, and be in and, and work in the office and 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 do the services but uh, I was just so happy all of you are are with us to today and today I'm going to be looking at a couple of verses um, verses I'm going to be looking at are verses uh, from Titus and from Matthew and it's about the how we view things in life um, let me just re read to you what Titus wrote or, or what actually Paul wrote to Titus, forgive me. And uh, Titus was a young minister in, in Paul's day and age. And in chapter 1, verse 15, he Paul writes this. To the pure, all things are pure. But to them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they, they deny him being abominable and disobedient and to every good work reprobate. Well, let me, let me just uh, try to put some meat on, the, on, on these bones, and these bones are well-defined. That Paul is warning Titus, you know, have a pure heart. You need to be pure. And that doesn't just mean in the area of, of, um, of physical things, such as our, our sexuality and that. That, of course, is... Very important. God himself, uh, wrote, with writings in the Bible, basically state, keep the marriage bed undefiled. And when I understand that, that's very important. I don't downplay that at all. But I think this even goes beyond this. I think it's just the way we, we look at things. Do we have a pure mind or is our mind naughty? We have to be careful with this. Uh, fellow Christian, we need to strive to keep our minds pure. That means be careful what you watch. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you read. You know, there's a lot of things out there and a lot of books and materials that we can get a hold of very easy that can can bring naughtiness in our lives. Um, I've been given this book on James. This is one that um, every month we're given a book by our association, the Baptist Association by Chip. And this one is, is on the book of James. It's a it's a commentary. It's a small commentary, but James is not a large book either. And I'm going. I've just started reading it. And one of the things about James is, and and I've got this from years and years ago when I was in Bible college in the early '80s. That according to James, and James is part of the Bible. It was written probably by the half brother of Jesus, and um, it was written to encourage Christians. To behave as Christians, to behave in a godly manner, and the whole book is uh, faith without works is dead faith. Now that he does not say you work your way to heaven. No, we all start the same way, through confessing our sins before the Lord Jesus Christ and asking Him to take them away. That's where it begins. But James goes then to say, because based on what Paul wrote, we are a new creation. We are made new. We have the mindset of Christ, or we should, that that our behavior should should define what we're saying we believe. That doesn't always happen in this world. I've seen this in many times. 
And there, and I, one of the big excuses of people not going to church over the years has been, well, they're a bunch of hypocrites. They say this and they do this, or they they act this way in church, and then outside the church, they don't act this way. Um, our testimony does count, and here, a, a a warning given to Titus by Paul, and Paul states the pure to the pure. All things are pure, but to them that are defiled and unbelieve, um, and unbelieving is nothing pure. And that's something we all need to remember. That, yes, we live in this world, and there's a lot of people in this world that, that live by a different standard from, from purity. There's a lot of people in this world that might be good in some areas, but they're not godly. They don't hold to God. Um, the first chapter of Psalms gives us a warning, it says, uh, warning all people to be careful who you listen to. And I think especially for your morality and for how you live your life. So for the pure, all things are pure. I want to be pure because I want to look at this world in a pure mindset. I want to see the goodness in this world. You know, we live in a in an area up here in Jay. If you're not watching from this area, it's a it's a country area. We we grow peanuts and cotton, and I and I know they grow a lot of corn in fields uh, for deer hunting mainly. There, it's a it, there's a lot of woods. There's a lot of country. It's a very very beautiful area, and in my opinion, it's uh, I look over across it, and it's like you see the 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 nature of God. Uh, in many areas, and and I I look at it in a pure form. Um, I also have lived in cities. I've lived in Miami. Miami can be tough sometimes, but I look at Miami, and you see the people in Miami, and you see at times smiles, and you see some of the greatness there, and even in Miami. And I'm not condemning Miami, but when we lived there, I found I found good things there, and. My life, I desire my life to, to reflect the purity, um, not only in how I see things in this planet, but how I view God. And I don't want to be a defiled person. I don't want to desire the wicked things because they don't find God. In fact, let me just take you to another passage. This passage is found in Matthew, and it's chapter 5, and this is part of what we call the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. And verse 8 is directly written for those who that are pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I truly believe this that this is this is as true as it gets. Jesus himself said this. So what does this mean for, for me? As we start and look toward this new year, this 2021, I want to encourage us all to look toward what is righteous, what is good, to, to the things of God. And may we strive to, to hold purity in our hearts so that with that purity, we do see God and we see things from a pure, a pure mindset. And that includes for those who might not agree with us, we, who might have hurt us, we forgive. We forget as God does. And we go on. We treat all people, whether whether in man's eyes they, they deserve it or not. And there are people that you may know that it's like, oh, they always are messing up. Stop. In God's eyes, how do we look? We have to be pure in heart. And we have to have that purity in our mindset so that as we go out into this world and we share our faith and we live our lives, that we see God. You know, I'm going to take you to one more verse. This is Psalms chapter 1. This is one of my favorite psalms, and it sets the stage for all of the psalms. Psalms chapter 1. Listen to what the psalmist here writes. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, three things here. Well, two things. First is walks. No, three things we'll do. Walks is you're doing things. You don't have all of your concentration on talking or listening. You're, it's divided. And the counsel, meaning advice of the ungodly. So you got walks, counsel, or advice, and the ungodly 
the word used here is not does not mean a terrible person it means a decent person a good person one who might have authority but they do not refer to god god is kind of absent in their lives they're good but they're not godly they're goodly i would say uh, and then it says here nor stands in the way of sinners now there's a little bit more um, more deeper standing you can concentrate on what you're hearing and what you're getting into you're not you're not so divided you don't have to watch where you're walking in the way is the actions is the actions and the word here sinners are those that could be rascals they're they, they not only not look to god but they they misbehave in in the eyes of god and and according to the standard of god they may not be the most wicked people in the world but they're the ones that will pull you away from god instead of pushing you toward him um they're going in and, and you're 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 behaving like them we have to be careful with that even worse and then nor sits in the seat of the scornful if someone is going to give all their attention to who they're listening to sitting down they have no worries they're not worried about standing they're not worried about i'm getting tired this is taking long they're able to sit relax and to listen it says the seat of the scornful meaning the very lifestyle and the, and the word here scornful is the word that is used for those that are antagonistic against God. They not only have God in their not have God in their lives. They not only can misbehave and maybe their lifestyle is is um, is a little bit out there, but these people actually attack the things of God. And this was written to the Jewish person by the psalmist who was not a born again Christian, but who was part of the kingdom of God in the eyes of God because they were the chosen people of God. They weren't Christians. But this is good advice even for us today. And then verse 2, of course, is, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So we have to remember that, you know, living in this life is complicated. If anyone tells you it's easy, no, it's not easy. There's a lot of, a lot of areas in the gray. I know, unless... Unless you have a the, the spiritual gift of prophecy, and let me explain this. I do not hold that people today who have the gift of prophecy are giving new information. When the Bible was completed, when this word was completed, it is completed. But there was a dual, a dual role of the prophet. One was to point out sin, and the other one was to give information new information from god that was not written down already the bible is completed that part is done but the but but there are those who when they become a born again christian are given this spiritual gift of being able to discern right and wrong instantly there is no gray gray area in the in the mindset of one who is a christian who has the gift of prophecy there is no gray it's either right or wrong and we need those type of people in our churches because they, they are kind of like our litmus test on, is this the way we really should go? And they don't see gray. Well, we have a lot of gray, I, I think, in our world today that people are looking at. And some of the gray areas are dangerous areas to get into. We have to be very careful. So let me encourage us. Strive to be pure. I know I've uh, I've grown to uh, I've grown in in um, in, re in a relationship with with many of our church members here, and I will tell you, I see a lot of people who are very pure in heart. They want to see, they want to be fair, they want to see our world in a fair light, and in a godly light. And you know what? That is so so important. I think back to, uh, and throughout my time in the ministry different individuals who I could point out to say these people truly are pure in heart because they truly they love the Lord they exemplified the Lord and his and all in, in everything in their life and they always looked to the good remember there was a woman many years ago that is now with the Lord for for many years her name was Mary Bonner and she was the greeter at 
this little church that we attended, it was a house that was converted over to a chapel. Small, small church, small, small church in Hollywood. I don't even think it's there anymore. And she was the greeter. She always had a smile. You could come in depressed as, and, and all get out, and you see her face, you see how she greets people, and boy, your day just brightened up. I truly believe she was a woman who had, was pure in heart. So let us strive to be pure. Let us strive to do what's right in God's eyes. And in this coming year, may we strive to do better as a Christian than we did in 2020. You know, 2020, for many people, they, they would say, and I would even probably agree, it was almost a wash. It was a tough, tough year. But things did happen. I'll tell you, I never thought I would be making videos on the Internet. I, did, I really never thought that. Never thought we would be broadcasting our service. In fact, that is one thing that my wife always would say, we need to broadcast, we, and others would say, and I went to the National Religious Broadcasters Con Convention in 2017, and I came back thinking, wow, this would be great. But even with, with the information I got, I still had no clue. This year brought this into fruition, and I will tell you this. I don't think we're, we're going to stop videoing and presenting our church services live on the Internet. I, th I think that's a very important outreach for our church. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's the best substitute for meeting together. But in this time of the pandemic, I understand. At least it's better than not doing any meeting at all together. In fact, I just saw a clip of a video that I was a little bit disappointed in by a Christian leader, and uh, two Christian leaders, and one represented a very large, one of the largest Christian colleges in the United States, and the other one represented a very, very large, what we would call a mega church, And they were talking about meeting together, and they were mocking a person uh, who's also in the ministry who has made the statement, we should meet together, assemble ourselves. Those that are high risk, protect yourselves. They, they broadcast, the, that church does, but they keep meeting. And they were talking about it, and some things were said that... I wish they wouldn't have said. Um, and I know where they're coming from, but I also know that when you're ambiguous, people can take things out of context very, very easily. We have to be careful. Be pure. Strive to do what's right in God's eyes. And it might be hard, but God will be with you for it. And he'll remember that. Let's bow for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. I thank you, Lord, for being our, our creator, our sustainer, and our savior. And Lord, as, we, as we've did, discussed these verses, may your word ring true and clear in our minds, and may we strive in purity before you, in moral purity, <clears throat> in doctrinal purity, and in behavioral purity. May we always exemplify you in everything we do and give us your strength and your wisdom in doing this so that the world may see you reflected through us. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. I hope that your week is wonderful. And if I don't uh, talk to you before, we will be having a broadcast both on Wednesday and on Friday. Last week, we only did Wednesday. Apologize for that. But Monday, I was out with... Uh, with our children, uh, my daughter, Amy, and I, we took them out in the church van down to Pensacola to do Christmas shopping and to just have a day out. We, we were blessed greatly. We had um, the woman who either owns or runs um, Kona Ice down at the mall in Pensacola. Wonderful thing. And I, 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 you know what? It's a good product. She comes over to us and she says, I want to bless you. And I said, okay. She handed me nine coupons or nine cards for free Chick-fil-A sandwiches or Chick-fil-A nuggets. And we, all the kids love the Chick-fil-A and we ate Chick-fil-A. And I thank you. Kona Ice, great. What a wonderful lady she was. Um, also, too, um, we just had a great time out. And I tell people, I said, nobody lost any limbs. 
no fighting, no bruises, nothing. You know, the kids got along. They were happy. I saw smiles. They were doing wonderful. Amy and I, we were, it was, it was an, it was a great day out. And as their pastor, I wanted them to see that we do care. And Amy had a great time and Amy's home from college and she, she took the older kids and I took the younger kids and we, we got them beef jerky, the specialty jerkies at this one store in the mall. We got them some ice cream, some Chick-fil-A. They, they bought some things. We went to couple different stores and it just was a nice day out and that's what I did Monday so I missed the broadcast on Monday because we left early we got back late and then uh, Friday was Christmas Day and I apologize with Christmas Day we just kind of vegged out at the house and and enjoyed time together as a family but this coming week we will be doing uh, the, the the full set of broadcasts I pray that you are doing well I know we have some in the hospital we lift them up, uh, Coach Mack especially. We just uh, pray that that he gets better and back up on his feet. And um, others who, um, I, I know t today I believe that uh, Kathy Ivy is going to be going to the hospital and they're going to be working out treatments, I guess, for her. Keep them in prayer. That's Joey and Kathy. Uh, lovely couple, great couple. Well, I just hope you have a blessed day. God bless and shalom.